And today we're going to be creating these incredible Zentangled, kind of Zentangled tulips. Now, one of the things that when we're creating tulips, typically is we make tulips be the showstopper with all the color. And this project turns that on its head. So we have black and white tulips and we have this beautiful, colorful background. There's a lot of options for how to create these tulips. One is to create these dots in the background and to not create any other thing, anything else other than those tulips. Another is to create, here's an example of a third grade where there's no dots here, but so many colors, um, cool colors, and it really still makes these beautiful tulips pop. And then another idea is to create something else in it, moths, butterflies, ladybugs, bumblebees. Again, no dots here because there are bugs in here instead. So lots of different options depending on you or the age of your students. Make sure to read the caption for the link to this incredible Spanish artist, Noemi, and you want to go give her a follow, but these were inspired by her incredible Zentangled and vibrant background art. And I'm just so excited to bring this artist to all of you. So make sure you check those notes for the links and let's go. When we're drawing our lines, we're looking at different sizes of Sharpie. So we have this thick kind here, and then this is the one that's this traditional size. And then there's this one, which is the extra fine. So we're using different sizes. You're going to need at least two. One of them is going to be for these thinner lines and the other is going to be for these thicker lines. So you can get away with these two or these two or use all three. It is up to you, but we're gonna start, I'm gonna start with the regular size here. And I'm gonna start by drawing my first tulip. Now it's really important to keep your lines nice and loose here. That means no need to go for perfection. So I'm going to start somewhere near the top of the page. You can start wherever you'd like. And I'm gonna draw a teardrop shape. But I'm keeping my lines wobbly. Do you see how it looks like my hand is shaking. This is okay. This is what we want. We want that realistic tulip look. Now I'm going to draw two more petals on each side. It's going to come up like a finger, but it is going to attach at the bottom here. So the first one's going to come up. It's going to come all the way around and attach, remember, at the bottom. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. They don't have to be symmetrical here at all. So up and attach at the bottom. Now your tulip might be thinner or thicker, and I'm going to add a rainbow line to connect this petal with this petal, just like this. Now, before I draw the second one, I'm gonna make sure I add my stem. So I'm gonna start here. I'm gonna curve the line and just kind of make the line go down wherever it likes. Again, keeping my line loose. This is gonna be parallel, but it's gonna be a little bit thicker at the top. So it's going to start thicker and it's going to move towards and then have it follow the curves of this stem. I'm gonna draw two more tulips just like that. Looking at my space, I have some space over here. I can turn my paper a little bit if I'd like. I'm gonna add my teardrop. This one looks like it's gonna be a little thinner. Here's my finger shape along the bottom. Here's my finger shape. They can be pointy or they can be more rounded. I'm gonna join with that rainbow line. And then this one's gonna come down to reach the bottom. And remember, thicker near the top and then the bottom. Finally, I'm gonna add a shorter one right here. So I'm gonna add my teardrop. Oh, this one's looking a lot taller. My finger shapes. And another one over here. Rainbow line. And then this one's gonna have a shorter stem. Remember to keep it thick at the top. Once I get to this point, it's going to need some leaves. So I'm gonna start here, keeping these lines nice and wavy, come to a point and then ring it in however I'd like. I'm gonna do another one down here. 
They can be very different. I'm gonna do another one here. For each leaf, I'm going to divide it in half, but not symmetrical, so I don't want it to be the same. I'm just gonna come down and just divide it in half somehow. So notice how I didn't do here to here, I did here to here. Same thing with here. I'm just kind of drawing a line down the center, and I'm gonna do it here. I think I'm gonna end it early. So once I get to here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to color in half of my leaves with the black. And then I'm going to color in the stems black. So I'm starting to add a little bit of contrast. There is going to be some drying time. It doesn't matter if I do the, the bottom or the top over here, you can Switch it around however you'd like. You can also start thinking about if you'd like to add anything else to your scene. Do you want to add little bugs? Moths, butterflies, bumblebees, ladybugs, something else. You can see there's some contrast. So if you have a darker or a thicker marker, now is the time to get this out. It makes the coloring a lot easier. You can see a lot faster. And again over here. Now, if I'm going fast for you at any point, don't hesitate to just pause the video. Everyone does art at their own speed. Okay. Also, this area here, underneath the rainbow line, right in here, we're going to color black as well to add some contrast to the tulips. I'm still using my thicker marker. If you don't have one of these, it's gonna take you longer to color things in. So take your time and just pause the video. One thing that using a thicker marker can do that isn't good is sometimes it can Make your lines a little sloppier, so you might need to go and fix them up a bit. Okay, this is the opportunity you have to draw anything additional if you want to draw it. So in the example here, she chose to draw some moths and some butterflies. You can add something else to your scene or you can just leave it as is. So the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and decorate using my thin one here on these leaves. I'm going to go ahead and add some stripes. It doesn't matter which way they go. You want to try to get them nice and thin. I like to make mine a little curved. They don't usually stay curved in the same direction. So if you find that that happens, that's pretty normal. If you find that you have lots of space in between your lines, you can go back and add, add some curves in there. And I'm gonna just do that for each of my leaves. And as I'm doing this, I'm thinking about what design I want for my tulip. Now I'm gonna keep my lines really simple but if you're inspired to do a different pattern when you're doing your tulip, that's exactly what I want you to do. And finally, this one. Okay. 
You can go as slow or as fast as you want here. Sometimes I like to vary it and see what happens and how my lines look if I speed it up. Sometimes if I go too slow, they almost seem too perfect and that's not really what I'm going for either. There we go. Okay, the next thing I want you to do is choose a pattern for these three petals. So I'm gonna do exactly what I did over here to show you how I did. And this one is just a wave. And I'm only using this thin one right now. So I haven't gotten out my thick black one again. I'm going to do that one final time at the very end. That one's like this, and then these, let's see, this one. I'm gonna keep this line wobbly. You can do whatever design you want here, but just use your thinner marker. This one, I think I did these big, I think I like them all to look like they're coming from the same point. So it almost looks like sun rays. Don't worry if your lines don't look perfect. See mine look all wobbly and squished in there. That's what we're going for. Once you have these done, then you can go ahead and decorate these sets right here. I like to make them a little different. So this one is wavy. So I'm going to actually just use some single stripes, these curved lines, just like my leaves. You can do whatever you'd like here. You could do spirals, dots, you could do zebra patterns. And let's see, since I have wave here, I think I'm gonna actually And you'll notice that it looks neat, but maybe it's missing something. And the thing that it's missing is us going and varying our line thicknesses. That's what's gonna take this from, oh, this looks nice to wow. So this one, I think I'm gonna curve these like rainbows. And take your time here. I'm using really simple patterns. You might not be. So if you're using patterns that are a little bit more complex, it's just going to take you a longer time to do them. And that's okay. Feel free to pause at any time just to show you some other designs. So she did dots here. You can see this pattern here. I'm gonna bring hers. So she liked the idea of making hers look kind of furry here. And she did that here. And then she did some polka dots on the side. So you have lots of options here. But when you get to this part, you can go ahead and take this and you can put it away unless you'd like to add, you know, something else around your work. And we're gonna get out another one. We're gonna get out the thicker one again. You can get out either of these, it's up to you. But what we wanna do is add some contrast inside these tulip. So inside these three petals. So this one, we're just gonna make, or at least I'm going to make some of my lines a little bit darker than others. So I'm going every other line here. Whereas for this one, I'm going to color in a portion of it with my black. So you can do whatever you'd like, but you're just adding some thicker, darker spots here. So I think I'm gonna, let's see, I like this spot right here. Not sure 
and maybe the edge here. So you don't wanna do it all dark, but you just wanna add some pops of something that's a little bit darker. I think I'm gonna make these a little bit thicker. There we go. And over here, I think I'm gonna actually add like a darker almost patch. And I'm adding, almost it looks like a sun ray coming down here. And I'm adding just a little bit. So remember, I'm not adding it everywhere. And as soon as you're happy with this, then you can go ahead and put your markers away and get out your paint. Now for this, I use neon watercolors because I just think it offers a brighter pop of color for spring, but get whatever watercolors you want, or you can also add something to the outside here, but meet me back here with watercolors. Okay, now that we have our tulips, I have my watercolors. These are the neon ones. I'm gonna be adding splotches of color here. So I'm not gonna be painting rainbow stripes around the tulips. I'm going to be just adding color in between the tulips. I'm actually going to move this to the side so I can get out my colors. I'm gonna start with yellow because yellow gets mucked up the fastest. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some yellow to my piece. I'm going around the tulips here and I'm just adding with no direction some splotches of color. Now the one rule that I like to do when I'm adding splotches of color is adding colors next to the color that I just painted that are analogous. So that means they're next to each other on the color wheel. So I have yellow here, so underneath it, I'm gonna paint a little bit of bright orange. And over here, I'm gonna make my yellow go into the light orange over on this side. This is a really light orange. And then I have a slight darker orange here. Anyone hears a funny noise? That's my hamster who's apparently trying to chew on his cage right now. Probably hears me painting. He's being particularly loud right now. Appreciate it. Let's see. Just kind of painting a rainbow, but letting the rainbow kind of guide me as to where the colors are going. I think I want this to connect. Maybe I'll add some pink over here now that we have some orange. Let the other side go green. If anything seems too light to you, you can go back and add another uh, layer of color after. I have all these fun neon watercolors, so I'm just having fun seeing what each of them is going to do. There's my purple. And then my color wheel's wrapping around again. So I have, I got to purple. So now I'm kind of going back around to my blue. Maybe I'll try to get some of a darker green right here in this corner. Maybe I'll have it spread right there too. Okay, now I have this color. I'm gonna to return to this color or this place up here and start to add that really bright green and see how those colors are really popping. And they're starting to show a lot of contrast between the black and white of these tulips. Okay. 
and the background. Some blue. Get some purple. Notice how I'm painting pretty messy. I'm just kind of letting the colors go, not being too particular because I want it to look like there's color splotches more than intentional color. I don't want it to look like stripes. I don't want it to look like a pattern in the background. I'm just trying to paint these big swaths of color. There's that. I'll switch over to pink. And this pink, which is slightly different. And I'm just kind of looking around. Is there any place that I want to darken up? Is there any that I was a little sloppy? Go back over those places and we can go ahead and let this dry. So once this is dry, we're going to add our final step. And the first is to add some white spots to this because right now we have more white with a little bit of black and here's black. So we want to add a little bit of white. So I'm going to go ahead and Add some paint pens can sometimes get a little clogged. There we go. You can also use a white gel pen. If you're struggling with the paint pens, like this one doesn't want to go as well today. They can be pretty finicky. So if any of these look like they're not as bright, you can go back over them with the white. Sometimes Posca pens will need a couple of different coats. And then we wanna take a look at what colors these are. So here's blue. So I'm gonna get a darker blue and I'm gonna add some big dots. I like to start with the big dots first and then it's easier to just add some small ones. So I have blue over here. If you have two colors touching, there's no rules here. This is just, I can even make the blue spread upward into the green or come down into the purple. That's okay. But I like to add the bigger ones first and then dot randomly. around. So here I have green. So I'm just going to repeat. Do you have to use the same color? Nope. Not at all. If you have another color that you'd like to use instead, if you have other greens that you'd like to use, if you'd like purple on your green, you can try that out and experiment. You can use a lighter color. You just want a different green than the green that I painted with here. So I'm just spreading out my dots everywhere. And then I'm coming in and I'm adding the small ones and I'm just kind of dotting. If some of them look a little messy, that's okay. I like that. I'm gonna Test out a lighter green for this area here. Again, no rules. And 
There we go. Get my yellow for my yellow. You could also use like a, a light peach here in these yellow spots, a light orange, a light coral. If you don't have your Posca pen right upright, you might look like you got more streaks. That happens to me all the time. It still will look amazing. Oh, that one's not used at all. Let's see if I can find one that's used. Nope. Got a lot of peaches here. There we go. Just wanted to show you what it'll look like. Maybe you'll like it. Maybe you won't. I think I'm going to make these go all the way down in here. Looks like I missed getting this spot at the very bottom. It's it's white, but once your um, once your markers are in there, that's okay. And then this is just time. So this is the same kind of feeling of zen doodling your tulips and adding those patterns, but you're adding it here. Now you could add lines, you could add spirals, you could add stars. You could decide that you don't wanna do these dots. That's okay too. But you can see, you can even stop doing part of them as dots. If you like, oops, no, oh, this is up here. I think I'm gonna add some, let's try red. Oops. I think this is the one that was, now it's gonna look like my painting has measles. purple. You could also do this with metallic Sharpies. Sometimes watercolors don't appreciate Sharpies or the other way around. So you have to be careful. Gel pens are a great idea if it's dry enough though. Um, you could also do this with oil pastels. And I'm almost done and I'm just moving into this space here. So, I have a brighter orange. And you can see this takes some time. But I think the results are worth it. For younger kids, it might not be something that they want to do. And that's okay too. Finally, maybe a last color here. And notice how I'm also not taking anything too seriously. It can be absolutely 100% messy. We have this one. We have this one. We have no dots at all. And we have only a little bit of color. Hope you enjoyed creating these beautiful tulips with me. Until next time.